Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup Round 16 match between Silse and the Sage. Silse has won the toss, chose to receive, Undead Mirror. Um, Silse has a 54% win rate in Champs Ladder. Sage has a 70% win rate in Champs Ladder. Silse qualified from Franco Ball and is French. Sage qualified from the OCC and is Dutch. So... Um, there's a bit of background on the on the competitors. I don't think you can read hardly anything into Silse's record in Champs Ladder, just because he's played so few games. Um, so you know that's not much of an indicator, really. But you know it's it's better than nothing, isn't it? Uh, as far as skill ups go, Silse took the block on me last round. This round, I, I don't even know. He's taken the guard, maybe. Did he take an extra guard? Yeah, he took the extra guard on the mummy, thinking that the mummy fighting is going to be key, because Sage has a strange zombie team. <laughs> Again, I've never stopped banging on this this uh, this team. I think it's pretty crazy to go two only two ghouls, three. There's a certain argument for. I mean, Silse has four ghouls and still has a reserve. So, in a lot of games, that's going to be 40 wasted TV. Now, obviously, having the safety net of it is pretty good. So, if, if you have three ghouls, then you've got two zombies on the bench that, you know, will often be wasted TV, but you've got a bit more of a safe, safety net. Sage has three reserves, which I think is one more than you're probably ever going to need. Um, you know, it's really a lot of players. That's a lot of TV sitting on the bench not getting used on a particular drive um, and the payoff is you have a slower team on the pitch I don't like it I did however like how Sage is keeping his mummies protected so far um, yeah so I did predict Sage to win this one just based on I haven't seen much of Silse you know I've only seen him play two games um, he hasn't got an astonishing win rate or anything. Um, you know, Sage has done pretty decent in Champs Ladder and decent in the private leagues that he's been in. And just, you know, I kind of know Sage's level, more or less, whereas I don't know Silse's level. So I would have thought. So that's why I backed Sage. But I do think his team is it's a lot worse. And, you know, it's, it's still not terrible. That's the thing, you know. Although I've... I mean, I haven't mocked his team build. I have... I've criticised it because it's just trusting to look. It's just herb derp. I'll blitz your mummy with my mummy and let's see what happens. There's like there's no skill involved in it. You know he's taken a basically a team, which undead, are, undead with four ghouls can move around and do things. He's taken a team that can do things and taken out their ability to do things and just turned it into dice of if he fouls you and make some removals it's good and if he makes removal like it's just really weird what i would expect would be a good strategy for somebody who wasn't very good but for sage i think it was a really bad mistake from him um but you know he's in the last 16 so he, he's he's got lucky enough to win his first game against all odds um and then in his second game he just did basically win by outplaying his opponent Despite the handicap of his of his team, um, and he's going to be trying to do the same to this game as well. I think. <laughs> Again, you know, he had his mummies together here; they're pretty protected. Um, Silse just had to blitz a zombie with his mummy, so you know. Obviously, I kind of glossed over that huge KO there from from Sage. Turn two, taking out a mummy, gives him a massive, massive advantage this drive. Now this is really where Sage has kind of got to earn his keep here, hasn't he? And he's got to uh, push this advantage and translate it into a win on the drive. Kaz back there, it's only a zombie. Regens, so... It is 10 versus 10. So it's, you know, it, although it's although it's a crap player, a zombie, it, it does, you know... Make things a little bit more even, doesn't it? And he's still probably got more TV on the pitch. Just the fact he's got these two extra ghouls. <laughs> no, 
No, he doesn't. Um, how much is the money that he lost? 140. So that's 100. So he's 40 TV down on the pitch. Um, but he was up a lot before then. Having these two extra goals, I just, I just don't know. It's really weird. Really weird. I, you know, really weird. He does get a mighty blow hit. Terrible reroll, in my opinion. Um, just because the knockdown doesn't achieve anything positionally. The the only thing you could get from that reroll is a Kaz. So that was literally spending a reroll for a 75% knockdown and then basically 50 50 to break armor and 50 50 to remove them after that. So that was really. Really re-rolling for a removal. Um, he still managed to get in the way quite a lot, and this is still looking really bad for Silse. You know, don't get me wrong, it's still looking really bad for Silse, but I think that was a incredibly poor uh, re-roll there. Um, and I think Silse is kind of doing the wrong thing here, in that he's just maximising blocks, and this this to me says that you're just going to get you know, overwhelmed in a, in a couple of turns time. I wouldn't have even hated going for a bit of a... Could he even get a potato? Some kind of cage up this side. As much as he could, or, or at least here, or something. Try to do something. Um, I think trying to force the play, as bad as it was, I, you know, he's, he just seems... He just seems in a really bad spot right now. I don't know how he's going to recover from it. So he does blitz the uh, furthest forward guy and does get the double skulls, which is now his decision to reroll is looking like it could really cost him, doesn't it? Gets a cheeky AV break. This follow is maybe not what he wanted. Um, and that, that's an unlucky 1 in 9 after the 1 in 36, so he couldn't re-roll it. And that has left an absolute massive hole in, in the line now, isn't it? So I guess that hole would have been there if he hadn't followed. But, you know, you've got to imagine that every block's going to fail now, haven't you? Because he's used his re-roll. So he should have been either maybe not making that block or thinking what's going to happen if he fails it. But that is absolutely given Silse an opening here that really he was he was out of it more or less. And that's that was it. That was a huge one in nine. Failure. Was definitely unlucky. But you know, maybe he could have played differently in case it you know, maybe stopped it happening, whatever whatever. You know, not made the block or limited the impact if it failed. That's what I'm trying to say. Now it's obviously easy to say that when you're watching a game on replay and you're not watching it live and you've only got three minutes and everything. But that really was an absolute critical failure allowing allowing Silse to get you know in this spot that he, he had no right to be in really. Um, but you know, he was only in this bad situation because of the lucky KO on, on turn two. Really, you know, had he kept that. But still, I still do think Sage was kind of outplaying him before then, but this is really... A real test for Sage now to try and recover the defense. Like it's not going terribly for Sage. It just he he, he would have had him locked down were it not for that one in nine. Still, it's still looking bad for Silse actually. Double GFI here or something. Just one. See that that blitz there that Sage made, where he where he knocked over the ghoul. That would have been a better one to greed reroll, just because knocking him down actually achieved something. Whereas knocking him down on, on the first turn just did nothing. Or second turn, whenever it was, his first reroll. So yeah, still, still really tricky. And uh, oh, so this this actual this hole here. 
was left by Sage. This this hole wasn't because of the one in nine. I thought this hole, where when Silsi had this turn, was because of the one in nine. It actually wasn't. So really, you could definitely argue Sage misplayed the positioning of this mummy. You know, maybe he should have been back one or two. Um, because he, he, yeah, so okay, yeah, fair enough. Look, that was, you could definitely say Sage was at fault if this guy had been one or two back. Maybe that would have been better, eh? Two back, you'd have been screening with the, with the white and with the zombie. So, I can understand why I wanted to get him as far back as possible. Because he's moving three, and it's, you know, really hard for them to reposition. But, uh, a nice little zombie dodge there, wasn't it? And double GFI. I think I would have just single GFI to tag. But uh, the double GFI, he's got three rerolls, so why not go for extra rolls, you know? You can't begrudge him going for the extra rolls there, but that was a, a great example there of why having four ghouls is good, isn't it? Because he was able to switch sides, break out, very good turn from Silse. And yeah, he, you know, at the time I thought that gap was because of the one in nine, but it really wasn't. It was Sage's mummy's position. And, you know, it's, it, again, you can't say it's wrong because, you know, if he'd put him there, maybe something else would have happened. But looking back, I do think maybe I'm going to go ahead and say that was a positional mistake rather than a dice mistake. And as with every Sage match, <laughs> a team building mistake because, you know, four goals is good. They're moving seven with dodge. They're, they're incredible players. Um, not so much in progression where, you know, they can get star player points and then not keep them because they've got no region, no apple. But lots of teams don't have an apple in res. And you get them back at the end of the match anyway. So they're, they're so good. Like, obviously, there's yes, the stacking of tackle mighty blow, which is what Sage went for. But here, I think I would have just scored because this is a lot of rolls to make it safe and and although they're all like three pluses with dodge or a two plus blitz i mean you could have even just blitzed with the ghoul and it would have been one in nine instead of one in six there were a lot of rolls that that he had to make here you know even even though they're one in nines all of them um because he's you know if he fails there it's it's not the end of the world like he's he had the basics done um but yeah, and really, I think this was a really, really risky turn. But that doesn't make it bad, does it? That just makes it high risk, high reward. You know, he had the reroll there. He he might as well make that block because he only gets punished one in nine, one in nine times. Um, as it is, he gets ultimate reward with a one dice power into Kaz. That's pretty unbelievable. And now he has made a lot of removals himself. And now you can't really blame Sage for considering the touchdown. However, he's got a chance here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI. Uphill. This was a this is about a one in six chance to surf the ball carrier here. And Sage does not go for it. He just goes for the my mummy will hit your mummy play. Um, but yeah, I think that would have been that would have been a pretty good time to go for the surf there. I think he absolutely I mean Okay, he's only got two ghouls, he doesn't want to lose one if he fails, but come on, you can't be scared of taking A-B rolls on your ghouls to, to stop a touchdown. I think he absolutely had to go for that, the cage dive there. Had to. That's what I think anyway. There was no zombie near to foul him as well, so it would have only been one A-B roll on his, on his ghoul. I like the three dice with block. And then don't even make, you know, that he could have made a two dice, two two dices or whatever. We just made, made the safe three dice block. Gets the touchdown. And he's looking pretty good. Huge KO roll. Comes back. Irrelevant KO roll. <laughs> Comes back. <laughs> So Sage has the chance to one turn here. It's obviously not good without rerolls, but he does have a sure hands guy and a movement seven dodge guy. So it's not it's not horrific odds of a one turn. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad odds, <laughs> but it's it's so bad that you could argue that going for three mighty blow hits is better. But at this point, Silse still has a reserve. So 
The Mighty Blow hits are likely to only be relevant if it goes to overtime. Um, I think I would go for the one-turner here. As ridiculously unlikely as it is. He could have got it even with a split. You know, he's got 11 players on the pitch. Even though it's uh, a wide LOS, he could have absolutely got the pushes to uh, to do a one-turn touchdown. But doesn't try. Just, I mean, you know, and, and again, that's not that's not outright bad. Um, could have got a right and still had a chance, I guess. He wouldn't have had much chance of the one turn. But I don't like giving up on it completely. But then, of course, if he goes for it and a ghoul dies, then you're like, why didn't he just take the three mighty blow blocks? <laughs> I think it would be terrible to foul here because he's got the reserve. They've both got reserve. You know, if, if he still had three reserves, absolutely go for the foul. But, um, no. I think the foul here would be a huge mistake. And this, this is the problem with your stat when your strategy is fouling, basically. I mean, it's, it's lucky that he's got the reserves and stuff, but again, he would have had this. He could have had three goals and he would have still had 11 players on the pitch. And while they, both people have 11 players, Sage is down massively in quality. He's down a white and two ghouls. Which is... Which is a lot of TV uh, to be down, and a lot of movement, and a lot of agility to be down as well. And it was by choice. <laughs> you know, a lot of it was by choice. Obviously, the, the getting him removed wasn't by choice, but... I will never, ever... No one will ever be able to convince me that two ghouls was better than three. Um, I can certainly see the merits of three ghouls over four. Um, you know, seeing as you can stack skills and everything. So normally, in normal NAF style, you have your six skills and you spread them around a bit. In this, the fact that you, you end up with... Uh, you end up with nine skills if you've got the final. But that's only if you get the final, right? <laughs> So before then, this is still looking like a NAF team with six skills. There's no there's no stacking um, on Silse's team. He just has like a NAF style team at this point. Sage has used the stacking, but you know, it it, it this is the last sixteen, and and Silse hasn't got the point where he wants to stack yet. So, but there is an argument with with the skill stacking that people will have mighty blow tackle, which they never have in in uh, NAF style tournaments usually. So there is an argument for that's a bit scary and the fact that you can stack on your mummies, you might want to do that. So, you know, you can stack blocks your hands on a ghoul. So there is there is all this argument for skill stacking and the counter picking. I understand all of this. So I could absolutely see three ghouls. Um, but two is, is horrific. And a big blitz. He's gone for the offset LOS. Sage, of course, makes the other side strong as well because... You know, he's played Blood Bowl before, so, <laughs> so you know, obviously he's put a strong presence there to make it harder to break through. But it's still possible to break down this side a little bit, isn't it? Don't like this GFI. That was a GFI, that was... Really don't like that. Because you might as well just move in the... Mm, I don't know. Another GFI. With a possibility of overtime, no way would I have done that. Um, but you know, it's risk versus reward, isn't it? Silse felt the risk was worth the reward. I wouldn't have done. Um, and he does that. That's it. I'm trying not to apologise all the time like I've tended to. <laughs> but you know... It's right though, isn't it? It is just risk versus reward. He thought it was worth it. I wouldn't. It doesn't make... It doesn't make him wrong or me right or him right or me wrong. It's just literally... There's more than one way to skin a cat. Not literally. Well, and literally, I guess. Seeing as literally doesn't even mean literally anymore. Uh, now, this was a big one assisting here. Because I would have maybe thought about taking him back to protect the ball. But obviously Sage thought through everything and thought where everyone was going to go and decided that he could spare him to make it a two dice block. I 
and this is an absolute huge, I think this is a, a mistake by Sage here, not following, because if he fails this pickup, he's got a, he's got a tackle guy on the loose, which I don't like. Now, yes, there would be a 4 plus dodge through if he had followed up. But who, who's going to make that? A, a skillless ghoul? So I think that should have absolutely been a, a, a follow. And I mean, that's exactly where you want your mummy on, on his tackle guy. You know, so he can't, he can't hit the mummy because he's too less strength in it. And so all he can do is dodge away without dodge. So, yeah, I think that was a pretty big mistake by Sage. You know, that's, that's what I think. He obviously saw some value. Well, I guess the cage was more protected uh, by doing it that way. And the same way as I, you know, I wouldn't have thought a one dice was wrong there because it would have got this this scale in a different place. You know, so that everything everything has different pros and cons. I don't like this by Silsa here. Because Silsa is 1-0 up and he's against a team with three agility three players, I wouldn't have committed crazily to the blitz like he did. Not crazily, that's a bad choice of words, but you know what I mean. I wouldn't have gone ham going after the ball like this. He's, he's basically over-pursued to the point of coming around the back. Chasing chasing the ball down from behind is is a bit extreme. And although, yes, he, he still has as many, you know, as kind of positionals as Sage at this point, that has got his tackle is stuck there, stunned, based by a zombie. And he's just got guys on the wrong side of the ball. I, I would have kept everyone in front of me and just gone for the 1-0 win here because I think it's very hard for Sage to score with this team. Um, I think, if you look at his games, <laughs> the first game he made he made a ridiculous touchdown um, after his drive went to shred. His, his drive fell apart and then he made a ridiculous series of rolls to, from both himself and his opponent to score. Um, in the second round, I feel like both times Mr. Light basically made mistakes, making it easy for Sage to, uh, or easier than it should have been for Sage to potato and score, basically. And, you know, des desperate scores. All three touchdowns he scored have been desperate in this tournament so far. So I feel all you've got to do is, with, with the movement advantage, is just to screen out and... Uh, and you know, just not give him the option to to break, basically. Well, that was okay, I think. Not so good, I guess, dodging first. Making a dodge with dodge is never something you want to rely on, is it? There was, there was some kind of removal there, wasn't there, at some point? Oh, yeah, there. And then, again, this is the thing why reserves aren't that good, because he can't come on the pitch. Now, now Sage has taken these three removals, and this 14th guy can't even come on and affect the player, so he's just not getting value from it. The, the chance of him getting value from it is really only in overtime, um, which is, you know, not really very good, is it? It was quite a nice move to get Mummy onto three guys. Rerolls that. I mean, I remember actually, I remember when this happened. Um, Sage had, had two and a half minutes left in his turn. And he used about the full 15 seconds to reroll that. And that made me think he hadn't thought about whether to reroll it before he made the block. Which isn't something you should have to think of, I don't think. I think the 15 second chunk that you get to decide rerolls is really bad. I feel like you should be able to make that block and then use two minutes to decide whether to reroll it or not, rather than what he should have done there, which was decide whether he was gonna reroll it for about a minute on a, you know, he's always gonna make that block, whether he's gonna reroll it or not, he's always gonna make the block. So forcing somebody to think for two minutes before they, they do it, 
but, you know, and it may not take him two minutes, but this was a really wild uphill. Again, I, you know, I would have really gone, I would have gone hyper conservative if I was still say. I would have really gone hyper conservative. And, you know, this is giving Sage a foothold to switch sides over here, isn't it? By knocking that guy over. And obviously, the payoff was big. Payoff was big. I mean, if he, if he knocks over the, the mummy, it's, it's completely amazing. So there is a huge payoff there. But for me, the risk wasn't worth it. Um, where, where was I before that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, so that, that thing, you know. So let's say it takes... Under optimal conditions, it takes Sage a minute to decide whether to use that reroll or not. He's got to then think for nine minutes for every, every time he makes that block, you know, overall. Um, and this was a similar one. I think he used about the full 15 seconds there as well. And, you know, it's, it's tough when you're going to be making the blocks anyway. Because you've really got to train yourself to think whether to reroll it before you do it or not. And it, it's, it is, I think it is really bad. Um, that you have to do that. I do think it's a, something that I hope to be changed in Blood Bowl 3 if it ever comes out. Um, I think 15 seconds for obviously on your opponent's turn for such as like sidestep and everything is absolutely, absolutely great. Quite like this little, little chain to base the ball carrier. And obviously if he powered him, um, he would have got another good zombie in there so it would have been a bit of even trickier for Sage. Also, notice that Silse has a screen with his ghouls, so there's really no chance of a breakaway. Um, well, I say that there is a chance of a breakaway. He hasn't he hasn't continued the screen with the white there. I would have continued the screen with the white out here, so there was really nowhere Sage could go. Um, I think maybe the play there from Sage was to switch the side, hand off to this guy in Potato, he's, as far as he couldn't get anywhere. <laughs> no, that was terrible. He couldn't get anywhere. He's got nobody with any movement, so really, all he can do is just stay around the middle of the board doing nothing. <laughs> really. Just looking at these ghouls thinking, wow, I wish I had. I wish I had three movement seven guys who could, who could completely uh, shut down any... <laughs> Any escape I have planned. <laughs> so he has got once again, he's got three players that can do anything. So all you've got to do is shut down those three players, haven't you? Screen out. Screen out with the ghouls. One, two, three. Four with the whites. So, you know, you can have a full screen there. Um, pretty easily. And what Silse does, I, I do not agree with. This one's okay. He's making a screen. But what is this guy doing, apart from being screened? You know, I think this this school here has to stand in this square. Yeah, this square. That to me, how do you put? You've got four players not in tackle zones, and they're all on this side. And guess what? Players can move diagonally in Blood Bowl. <laughs> um, see, you know, that's just if he was here, everything's so much safer. If this school's there, because mummies can only move three, right? So he's blitzable by a mummy. So he could have been one square back, and then he could have been there, and he would have had his little screen all across the centre of the pitch, really safe. But I think this is a really bad mistake by Silse, um, putting these four guys here really, really poor, honestly. Um, he, with, that, with that lucky removal, um, it gives him a chance to make up for the screen. He then puts this guy in a nothing spot. He's not basing the ghoul on the ground. He's not basing the mummy. He's just literally doing nothing. And then he gets slightly unlucky with a failed dodge. Uh, one in nine. But yeah, I think this was... You know, Sage has his critical turn in the first half where he left that gap, maybe. Harder to call that one because I didn't spot it till afterwards because I really thought it was because of the failed mummy is how, is how Silse switched sides. Um, so yeah, so Sage basically let Silsis change sides in the first half and now 
Silsa has let Sage get this uh, potato play. Uh, potato being an unsupport, unprotected ball carrier <laughs> on his own, because there was a coach called Potato um, in some some league in the early days. Now Sage blocks himself here, which is uh, pretty undesirable. <laughs> Forces him to make a dodge there. It does get him an extra square close at the end zone, um, so it's not just completely terrible. But I think the important thing was just to get wide, so I don't think it would have mattered too much if he was one square back. Sage getting his own zombie dodge there. And now this is looking pretty bad for Sil. He's looking it's looking like overtime, isn't it? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, he does he does a bit of a bit of a greedy thing here with a GFI. Uh, obviously it does make it a lot it doesn't do really a lot actually, the GFI. The GFI means that if he's here, Sage can dodge away and score. If he's there, Sage can dodge away in GFI once. So it's the option of maybe trading re-rolls. Um, yeah, I think that's almost pointless to uh, to do that. And then he goes for the... And he goes for the... And he also dodge with this guy. Now, this dodge was quite good. So I skipped his second dodge while I was looking at that one. The, the second dodge he made before going for the blitz... Uh, well, sorry, the second dice roll that he made before going for the blitz. So the first one was the GFI. That I don't think mattered. This this dodge here did stop Sage supporting the other ghoul. So this was actually a pretty fine, safe one. The blitz was going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, GFI, GFI. So, you know, that was forced to use two dodges and two GFIs. There was a you know really good chance you'd have to use a team reroll on the Blitz. So I really didn't like the extra two plus there. This was a skill reroll which which shuts down Sage's chance of supporting his 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 other ghoul. Um, so yeah, Sage, all it is is a three plus GFI. He could one dice Blitz, but then it's 33% to use a team reroll. If he dodges in GFIs, it's a 17% chance to use his reroll, but it's uh it's it's and it's only marginally less likely to score because it's one in thirty six isn't it um so I don't hate the dodge away he could have blitzed um obviously it wouldn't have mattered in the end because he failed the dodge but you know the the blitz was the better play to score I think everybody would have gone for the dodge just for you know seeing as he, especially as he's playing for overtime I think if sage if this was nil nil I think maybe go for the blitz to try and just win in normal time. Um, you know, to increase your chance of the score by one or two percent is probably worth it then. But when when he's one nil behind and he's playing for overtime, I think absolutely the correct decision there. And now, of course, um, Silsay gets a bunch of removals that don't matter at all <laughs> to make it look like Sage was completely diced. Um, <laughs> but you know. It really wasn't. It wasn't completely decided by the dice at all. There were a few critical things that didn't go Sage's way, um, such as basically the greedy stall. Uh, I, th well, I think it was greedy. I think, I think that was a pretty. He had a lot of dice to roll. Still, say when he went for the stall. Um, but you know, by the same token, Sage didn't give himself the chance to get lucky. He didn't. He didn't go for the surf on the ball. Um, he could have surfed the ball carrier. Well, he could have one in six. He would have surfed the ball carrier had he gone for it. And he did leave actually the gap for the for the for Silsa to change sides. Um, you know, again another removal. Not that it matters at all. <laughs> Just making blocks that don't matter. I mean, it's fair enough, isn't it? He's in the World Cup. Like some people would say, it was BMing to to drag out the match after it's over, but. At the end of the day, you know, he's in the World Cup too, isn't he? So he just wants to... I've got nothing against people using their last turns for whatever they want to do. <laughs> but yeah, if he... Certainly if, um, if Silsa had got these dice uh, in the first half, it would have been a dicing. But as it happened... Being all these guys down after it was already decided doesn't really make any difference. Goes for the foul, you know, why not? There's no reason not to. Foul doesn't achieve anything, but neither does the second touchdown. So.
So yeah, at the end at the end of the match, it says sixteen AV breaks to nine, but really, <laughs> about about six of those AV breaks came on the last couple of turns when the game was over. Um, there was an interesting stat from the dice rolls, uh, block dices. You've got 29, 32, 26, which, which is slightly be below average. And then you've got sages, which is 41, 31, 23. So that was <laughs> there was a lot of skulls for sage. And uh, he did have to use, uh, what, one, two, three. He had to use three rerolls on blocks and could have used another couple. Um, while Silsay, oh, was this with block? It could have been. He rolled two both downs there, but didn't have to reroll a block in the entire game. But you know, he he, he ended he ended the uh, he ended the half with plenty of rerolls. So you know, he could have he could have failed things and it would have evened out really i think at the end of the day both both coaches made mistakes on defense and uh, the difference was that silsi wasn't punished for his and you know maybe the build maybe the build was the deciding factor and obviously yeah a lot of schools for sage i think sage did get the worst dice uh, but you know ultimately well played to silsi congrats to him thanks for watching if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.